Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of HFS Unfiltered. In in today's uh, conversation, we are going to talk about global capability centers or GCCs, the topic that's dominating the uh, the IT services uh, industry right now, especially in India. And I have a super special guest with us today, Swarupa, uh, who's the head of Eastman Chemicals Hyderabad Operations Center. So, welcome to the show, Swarupa. Thank you, Swarupa. So Swarupa, let me let's start with a bit of background on uh, Eastman Chemicals, and you know how does your India center cater to the broader strategic goals at uh, at Eastman? Yeah, so uh, Eastman is hundred hundred plus years of uh, organization um, based out of uh, Kingsport in Tennessee, and um, we call it as a Hyderabad Operations Center, um, the Hyderabad uh, office. Um, and it has been operational since last 10 years now, close to, as of uh, this week, we are 10 years. And um, we are a shared services office here, um, catering to the uh, various um, functions of the global organization. And especially, essentially on the talent capabilities like any other GCC. So um, we deliver the core capabilities here on the digital space, finance, supply chain, um etc etc so i think i can comfortably call it as a microcosm of the global organization so fantastic so congratulations on completing 10 years so as as you as you look back at these 10 years of existence of uh, of of your shared service center swarupa what what rises to the top as you know these are the two or three biggest accomplishments uh, that that you as a team have uh, have accomplished um, see, I have joined Eastman around one and a half year back, <laughs> right? Um, it has been a short stint comparatively, but um, I think the, the the center as a whole has really catered to the global needs in a in a in a very impactful way. I think I can really call out um, the significant contribution has been in the IT space um, because we have started that as a pilot in Hyderabad, and eventually we have scaled up the capabilities. So I think I can um, uh, confidently say that. Um, um, the core digital capabilities that we have, essentially the three, four digital products that we have from Eastman offerings, um, they are predominantly uh, built and um, contributed, built and developed, I mean, developed from, from Hyderabad office. So I think that's a significant contribution that we have. And um, also on the engineering space, which is a core for any manufacturing slash uh, chemical industry, I think we have um, the design services um, predominantly led from Hyderabad. So I think that is, again, um, I, I would call it as one of the major accomplishments. And we do have a um, couple of 100% um, 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 uh, co-located in Hyderabad, essentially on the IT services as, uh, on infrastructure, as well as there are a couple of um, areas in the supply chain. Uh, where we are um, running the operations for the global op organization, 100% from Hyderabad. So I think I can definitely say it's a combination of um, core capabilities in IT and a couple of unique capabilities that we are uh, offering for the global organization. Fantastic. So, so Swarupa, as you as you look at the next 10 years, what's sort of on the horizon? See, I think like any other GCC, right? Um, sort of, <laughs> um, we we started with uh, more of an operation center, mature to the delivery center. So I think um, our um, our journey has been uh, a little humble in the beginning. I think we have started in 2014, but we have relatively been in big, small size, growing the capabilities for the global organization. Um, but I think we have picked up on the speed since um, uh, pandemic. I would say 2020, 21 has been where we have seen a significant growth in center. Um, so I think like any other GCC, we are looking at, we are aspiring to be a capability center for the global organization, right? Where we can really be as a strategic talent hub for the global organization, um, driving the corporate agenda, not just in one area, but multiple areas that we are looking at. Um, essentially, in the IT space, we are envisioning few of the core capabilities that are fully driven from Hyderabad um, to strengthen the innovation agenda for the global organization. That's definitely one of the things that we are looking at. Um, on the data science, I think we are um, we are also leading um, the the data agenda for the organization, right? Um, be it the be it the um, talent um, st um, data hubs that we are talking about, right? Um, or the overall um, um, AI AI mission that we have for the organization. I think we have predominantly um, started our journey on that. 
And uh, most importantly, I think uh, like any other GCC, we are maturing on the GBS, right? The global business services, right? So um, we are we are now working on uh, looking at the complex um, capabilities to be delivered end to end from Hyderabad. Though we have not started the journey, I think there is definitely a dialogue where we really want to um, leverage the talent here, right? So. I think if you ask me two, three areas, one would definitely on the IT space, um, like any other organization, right? And um, the second one would be more on the engineering space um, because we are a manufacturing organization. We just want to make sure that we are delivering to the core of the manufacturing services as well, right? Like whether it is um, the advanced designing services that we deliver from here, I think um, that is definitely on the radar. And um, most importantly, on the supply chain world, like um, what kind of capabilities that we can drive for the global organization because of the time zone advantage that we have, right? Like we are spanning across the Asia, Pac, AMIA and US, right? So I think supply chain is also one of the areas that we are looking at. Yeah, that's fa fascinating, Swarupa, because we, we are seeing that global capability centers are no, no longer just a place for only cost arbitrage. Obviously, you get a cost effective operations there, but it's it's becoming more and more about skills arbitrage. And I think the combination of, as you rightly mentioned, there's IT services, there's engineering services, and there's business services all being delivered out of uh, global capability centers. But the one one thing that I wanted to uh, ask, you mentioned AI, and I think AI has a lot of different emotions attached to it. <laughs> it's, 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 it's exciting, but it's also nerve wracking at the same time so are you are you excited by it are you a little nervous by it are you a bit of both i think i'm super excited about it because sort of if you look at 10 years back when we the whole automation rp and everything has started there was a huge panic in the industry that what happens to my role and and cut short i think if you're getting 10 a decade from that uh, that place right so you see that the level of um value creation that we have added to the roles is significant right um, we are just trying to shift the low low hanging things or the low value added things to the automation and we are moving towards the more uh, critical stuff that the human brain can process right um, ai is a different ball game i totally understand it is really giving a tough competition to the human race but i strongly believe that there are still a lot of things that humans can handle better than the ai space right so I'm not nervous. I'm excited because if you look at the technology advancement, be, be it a blockchain or AI or IoT and all those things, that is enabling the humans, right? But um, but if you look at the workforce is also significantly growing. I think we are, the job opportunities that we are getting, though there will be some kind of a panic, but people really need to understand that, oh, I think I can leverage this to the best of my advantage. Don't try to panic don't panic to that but make sure that you are you're upskilling on it and trying to see like what is the edge that i want to get over the technology i think that would be the first thing that everyone should think about um so in short i'm excited about ai <laughs> oh that's that's great there's almost a tale of two cities that's happening in india right now you know on one hand you see a lot of these large third-party it service providers having a bit of a rough time to be honest right there if you look at their growth rates it's either flat or declining but on the other hand you look at gccs like yourselves and uh, they are either rapidly sort of there's an explosive growth in either expansions or new setups so why why is that happening See, I think most of the organization, um, given the model is proven with the GCC, right? Like um, the parent organizations or the global organizations really want to tap into the potential of the talent here, right? And um, naturally, the level of um, commitment or the level of connect of an employee is much higher than a third party. If you're outsourcing to a third party organization, they, they build a product and, and deliver it to you. Um, the way that an employee can think through a product, right, like an internal stakeholder or an external stakeholder that we are talking about, that is definitely one of the things that um, we see it different, right? And um, I think um, the other thing that is also very predominant in this whole gameplay, the shift of the organization from, as you rightly said, the cost arbitrage to the talent arbitrage, right? So when they want to really evolve to the journey, they just have to start investing in their own talent, right? 
Um, so I think that's something that is really causing and it is not a plug and play like with the third party organizations. They really want to invest in the talent, grow the talent to the global needs um, of the organization and drive the innovation of the organization. And if you see, I think most of the firms have their general managers sitting in Hyderabad now. They are in, in fact looking at um, moving the global leadership roles also into the Hyderabad because they have seen that kind of uh, a significant contribution coming in from India Inc., if I have to say, right? So that's the change which is driving. And um, you know the kind of clauses that really works with the, with the third party organizations, right? So that's 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 my view. You know, I think I think you're right. You have you you feel a little more in control uh, with, with with the GCC versus losing control. And given the model is proving, you know, more and more companies are are jumping onto the onto the onto the bandwagon. Like, so so tell me a little bit about why Hyderabad. You know, what's what's Hyderabad's? Or let me ask you this, Varupa. Why India? What's India's superpower? And then within that context, why Hyderabad? See, um, good or bad, we are the most populous country in the world. <laughs> um, I'm not saying that is driving the factor, but look at the, our education system. I think we are predominantly STEM based, right? You see that hundreds of thousands of students are having that, including the Indian parents, like we have fascination towards that engineering course, et cetera, et cetera. So you have a large talent pool of the entry level resources are available. That's number one. Um, number two is again the cost arbitrage, the, the kind of cost um, play that we have unsayingly is one of the strong um, um, case there. And um, if you look at um, the kind of um, um, talent that we have, not not just the entry level, but at uh, every level that we are really talking about, be it in the product management, IT services that we are talking about, I think um, education itself is a, is a huge strength. And um, then, of course, the communication skills. I think there's a lot of emphasis in our um, country about English being the, the language for us right from the day one of our schooling and all those things, right? The fluency of English and the way we communicate. And I think more importantly, um, something plays on our culture also. Again, this is my view, but um, we always try to put the customer centricity in every conversation that we do, right? Whether it is with a global organization also, Right. We are talking to the global leaders also, but I think there is a kind of a customer centricity that we really have put in. Right. So I think that is also one of the key drivers that is really um, helping us to really India being a favorable location for all of all of that. And I think our resilience to change, right? Resiliency to change. I think there is a strong appetite in our culture. Um, again, I speak a lot about our culture, but uh, there's a resiliency in our culture that there is an appetite for change. We we are agile. We move on to the um, change uh, pretty fast, right? Um, I think that is also helping. And um, the resiliency is driven by the average age of Indian employees, right? If you look at 27, 29 is the average age of most of the firms. In my firm, I think we are average age of 29, 30 years. So that's the kind of an age of the workforce that we have. I think those are the couple of things that I feel is really driving that. And I think from an organization, from a uh, government perspective, the ease of doing business, the government policies, which is really enabling these kinds of setup. I think that is also helping, which is pro GCCs, right? So um, they are getting a lot of perks in setting up here. So I think that is also really enabling the GCCs, is my view. No, that's that's fantastic. So let's let's talk a little bit about talent management because that's that's really the name of the game here. And you know, this is not a new model. We we've, we've we've seen GBS, GCC, or even IT services, third party services being in existence in India for for 25, 30 years now. And, uh, you know, when it, when the whole thing started, you know, I graduated out of India and my first job was as a software engineer when in one of these IT services companies, you know, uh, my parents were quite, quite proud of me. And so was I, I was quite happy. But now as I look at my, maybe they had low expectations of me, but anyways, uh, but as, as I look at my nieces and nephews now coming out, you know, there are so many opportunities in, in India. Uh, unlike when, for example, I was I was growing up, uh, they either want to join a startup or they want to create a startup or they want to join a technology company, uh, you know, and perhaps 
the IT services, you know, uh, GCCs, uh, these are not no longer the sort of the only thing that's driving our cream of the talent at least you know so what what do you think our industry needs to do to make make this sexy again you know make this attractive for the top talent to attract uh, uh, india's top talent here yeah see i think if you look at um, around 5 10 years back um, definitely gcc was not an attractive place for all the new entrants, right? Because I think uh, the initial phase of the GCC evolution was that we are stuck to more of an operations thing, right? Like, okay, it is just, um, though we are a parent, we, though we are like a um, um, an arm to the global organization, it was always seen as mostly outsourcing the kind of a stuff internally also, right? So I think that was the mindset when we have started. Um, so it was very difficult for us to attract the talent because we're really talking about the operational nature of the things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But as you see the maturity of the GCCs from the operations to the capability slash innovation or the business driving thing that we are really talking about, I think that has changed the story of um, talent management a bit, right? Where we are really talking about, as I referred earlier, we are talking about global leadership positions, positions in, positioned in India, right? Where we are leading the global capabilities for the global organization. That's number one, right? We are talking about um, critical research and uh, in research and development kind of an initiative. So if you look at like um, most of the major firms have R&D centers also set up in India because of the kind of an innovation, innovative culture that we have seen, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that is driving to some extent where we are really talking about the whole purpose of the things, right? It is not just the operations, operations, right? While there is some segment of it, um, which is a reality and which, which can't go away, but um, we have evolved towards the research capabilities, right? The critical and complex capabilities of the organization right and as i said like the complex leadership positions that are coming into india that definitely is the new story for the talent management attracting the talent so you have to be very clear in what kind of purpose that you are driving in india right what kind of capabilities that you are you want to build and store it in then it is not not a difficult one because i've seen that change in my organization itself where the way we used to approach the market was a different thing on we do this this is what is our offering but now you you change the storytelling and say that this is what we are envisioning to and this is what we have started etc cetera, etc cetera. i think we have seen some good talent onboarded in the recent past right so i feel it is all about making sure that you have a strong purpose then you know like what you want and then target that kind of a talent pools then it is not a difficult one right like if you go to the premier institutes like IITs and all those things in the past oh you are GCC probably we don't even have any any people coming in for the placement talks also right students placement talks also but you now go and talk about the complex things that you are delivering and do kinds of a hackathons and all those things with the students um, then that's an instant instant connect to the organization right so it's all about it is important that you talk about those critical capabilities that you are driving from here Oh, that's fantastic, uh, Swarupa. This was a this was a really really interesting conversation. But I wouldn't let you go without asking this hypothetical question, uh, Swarupa. So let's imagine you have a magic wand and you could make one wish come true. Uh, what would that be? Okay, if it is with respect to Eastman Chemical India Private Limited, <laughs> I want to drive the R and D capabilities from India. For the global organization, right? Not contribute, but drive the R and D capabilities for the global organization. I think we've covered the, the three value propositions here at HFS. We talk about you know uh, the the whole value proposition for India started as cost arbitrage. I think where we are today is more of a skills arbitrage, uh, where you're finding the skills. And I think what your wish is to get to innovation arbitrage, where uh, and which which is which is fantastic. So so thanks a lot. I really enjoyed it, and I'm pretty sure our listeners would uh, would enjoy it as well. Thank you thanks so much, Sarab. Thanks to HCS for the opportunity as well.